Well, so far, this has been a lecture in the shade for almost a half an hour, and I am pretty cold because I dressed for a walk and not for a lecture in the shade. So uh, we'll see how it goes. And here we have the bottleneck. Well, yeah, the, the ones that are the big mansions that are uh, from the 1800s are the same. Those, the ones that you can go into now are much newer, but the oldest part of the city, the 1700s part of the city, that's the most old part of the city. as 
a, a slave trader. And so he imported slaves from Africa. And many of those slaves had been, you know, that he kept had been passed down in the family history. Now, here's another little avenue that I wish I could explore. Out in our state forest, in the Natchaw Forest, there's the remnants of a community um, where some African, a little, you know, group of houses where African American slash Native American people live. A family that was half African American, half Native American, they were stonemasons. And they lived there for many years out in that section of the Natchaw Forest. So I've had this conversation with Nick Bellantoni because, boy, I really want to find out if I'm right. Because, <laughs> like, you know, sometimes, like, historical research, you, it's like in science, you do start out with a hunch. That hunch leads to a hypothesis. You know, but here's my hunch hypothesis. I think that the slaves that um, belong to the Randalls, who may have been stonemasons, did intermarry with some of the local Wabakoset, the people that lived in this area. Mm -hmm. And they eventually found, you know, their own land and their own homes. And they owned a quarry out there in the Natchuk Forest. And they were responsible for helping many people build their cellar holes and their chimneys and the sills. And there's this little quarry out there where you can see where they took the stone. And it's very much like what I'm going to show you in a, in a minute, you know, how they took the stone out of that place. So who knows, you know, I don't think we have enough old timers around who remember the stories that go back that far to really help us anymore, unfortunately. <coughs> um, the feature I wanted to look at here is not buried in the other cemeteries around here. So as a matter of fact, we're not sure about young Obadiah. We think we know where his grave is, that it might be here. It's one of those unmarked graves back when the family was poor, when he died around 1781. Um, so we think that he he's probably buried in an unmarked grave because um, Obadiah's grave is unmarked. And it looks like, um, you know, it's a big field stone grave. But um, there's a couple of graves that you can just sort of read. Just be careful with them. They're very fragile. Dorothy Townsend is getting very old now. She's in her 90s, and she has always tried to um, preserve <clears throat> the cemetery. She did try to repair Robodiah's um, gravestone. When, when she wrote her book, The Lost Village of the Higginbottoms, Roba was her girl. Robodiah was the person that she ferreted out in her historical research to study. And for me, it was Dorcas. Um, I, I worked on Dorcas for my, my pieces about Dorcas Higginbottom. So um, she's always had a thing, for, for years I would come out here in, in the spring and there would be the remnants of a wreath that she had placed on Loba's grave. And, you know, I, thought, I always thought that was kind of sweet. So um, you can see Dorcas Higginbottom's grave, which is kind of cracked, and, and there's a couple of um, smaller graves from um, the Higginbottoms from later years. Um, later into the 19th century, the family is still burying some of their relatives, descendants out here. Um, Adelaide is a great granddaughter of Darius, and 
so there's still a few people. The Hickenbottoms changed their name sometime in the 19th century to Botham. Are there any Bothams here? Oh, you are Botham. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Well, not now, but we from Oh, great, great. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. So that's why you know so much about that. Oh, good, we so have to get together, work together on this. That's so exciting. So, yes, so there are still Bothams in the area. I do. She in does. that cemetery, yes. I heard you talking about the Patty Randalls, and I've done a lot of research on what you've been doing also. Great, great. But what I found was a third stone with <laughs> Patty Randall, and it was Mrs. Patty Randall. Yes. Now, was she one of the Patty Randalls that married the same man? Yes. Um, I think George Randall's wife was Patty Randall. And so she father, died. And, and she died. And her best friend... Her, also, Patty married him later. Oh, okay, yes, I think that might be true. I'm not sure about and the, that. And the second wife died right part. away, too, yeah. like on the same day, like a year later or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But there's no date on that other stone. And one of them is the daughter <clears throat> that was friends with Robodiah. So I think the one that's closest to Robodiah was her friend. And they, want, they wanted to be buried next to each other okay. from family lore. Yeah. So, so have you done research on the Randall family? No, I've just really, when I knew I was doing this, yeah. I just started pouring onto the internet yeah. and getting as much information oh, as I could. Yeah. And we go around to old graves yards and do rubbing. Yes, yes. And yes. Um, you can, like, all the willows are made by the same man. You can yes. see his work. And there were yes. no angels, which means right. that he wasn't capable of doing the angels yeah. of death. And he only did the willows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the skull is called the angel of death? The angel of death. Oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. old, too. Oh, well, that's great. Have you been to the Abington burial ground? Because no. there's so many great gravestone carvers there.